Good morning, everybody. Hello. So my name is Sean Keyes. Um, I'm the editor of the Penny Share Letter. And uh, I'm here this morning to talk to you about my newsletter's investment strategy. So as you can imagine, it's focused on small companies. And there is something of a puzzle when it comes to investing in small companies. Um, there's a lot of evidence out there which suggests that small companies are great and they have excess returns. There's a, a lot, an awful lot of academic research which sort of backs that up. But I think that for ordinary people, small companies don't form the heart of their portfolio. So that's the puzzle. It's a bit weird. Ordinary investors don't invest as much as perhaps the evidence says that they should. <clears throat> so what do I mean by the evidence says they should? I'll just quickly go into that. I won't bore you with it too much. Um, when economists first got their hands on like computers for the first time in the 60s and 70s, one of the first things, the first data sets they could actually work with was stock prices. So they looked at stock prices. And one of the first things that they found from the first data set they looked at was that if systematically small companies seem to outperf outperform big companies, and that was a bit of a bit unexpected, um, even then, pre-efficient market hypothesis days, it was, wasn't thought that it would be as easy as that to just invest in small companies and get excess returns. And, okay, how big are the returns I'm talking about here? Well, the early studies show that the numbers are kind of extraordinary. You're getting 1.6% a month, according to the, one of the first studies, 2.6% per month, according to another, 1.9% per month. Big numbers. Uh, so these numbers sort of indicate that something was going on here, right? And that's, those are just raw numbers. They're just showing the difference between uh, portfolio of big companies and portfolio of small companies. They're not adjusted for risk or anything like that. And if anybody who's uh, a long-suffering academic finance person will understand that like small companies are riskier, and so the investors deserve to be compensated a bit for that. But even adjusting for risk, small companies were found to, to, to return more. Another study showed that by Fama and French showed that small companies returned about 0.75% extra per month once you adjusted for risk. So I don't say all this just to, I don't mean to bore you with a lot of numbers and academic finance history early on, early on a Saturday morning. I'm just trying to drive home this idea that there is something very big here and something which needs to be taken seriously. Uh, it's not just a, sort of an American phenomenon or a developed world phenomenon. It's been shown to work in 16 or 17 of 18 countries that were studied. And here in the UK, uh, the Numis Smaller Companies Index outperforms the FTSE 100 by about 3.2% per year since 1955. Now, okay, it's very early, lots of numbers. Here's what it looks like on a chart. So I've redrawn the two numbers at the top just so it's clear to everybody. Uh, the blue line represents the SP 500, which is take it as a benchmark. The red line represents small stocks. Now this is a log scale, it's important to realize. So the chart, if you're looking at it, just uh, the, 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 uh, the chart visually under represents the, the extent at which small companies are performing. Uh, you can see there, 2.6 million invested in, $100 invested in 1925, brings you up to 2.6 million in 2007 when this data stops. Okay, all right, that's the background. So the reason why perhaps a lot of you haven't invested heavily in small companies is because there is a sort of a disconnect. Despite all of this evidence, it's actually hard for ordinary investors to make money from this idea. In, in reality, it's not just as simple as buying a portfolio of small stocks, you know, stick them in the drawer, go away, 20 years later, you're a lot richer than you would have been, right? The small company effect, as they called it, is a sort of a slippery bugger. It's very clear when you're looking back at the data, but when you're actually trying to, in the here now, formulate a strategy that works systematically, it doesn't work so well. So that's why this idea has been more of a kind of an academic kind of a curio 
than something that you hear a lot about, you know, from your financial advisor, from your pension advisor at dinner parties. This isn't something that investors are really animated by because I think perhaps it's been a bit disappointing, the track record up till now. So this is all just the background, right? What I want to talk to you about is what has changed. And what's changed is that there's some new research which shows how to actually grab a hold of this, how to invest in the here and now in small companies and profit from it. Okay, the research is a new paper. Uh, it comes from a bunch of economists uh, at a hedge fund called AQR Capital. AQR Capital is a really big hedge fund in the States, seven biggest hedge fund in the world. Uh, also in conjunction with economists at University of Chicago and NYU. The lead author is a guy called Cliff Asnes, so I'm just gonna call it Cliff Asnes as paper from now on. So, what this paper does is sort of, it shows you what you need to do, right? Now, and I just said that making money from small companies is more difficult than you would, have, you would have thought. And there are four possible explanations that have been put forward for why this is. The first explanation is that perhaps that once it was first discovered in the 80s that like it just got arbitraged away. You know, the, people, people became aware of it, invested in it, and so this, where it went to premium. Another is that maybe it's just concentrated in the very, very smallest micro caps and therefore not that useful to big institutional investors like banks. Some, some data seems to show that it just lives in certain times of the parts of the year. Other, another explanation is maybe that it's just a proxy explanation for liquidity. So until this research was published, that was sort of where things stood. People assumed that that was the explanation for this. What's changed is this paper says that if you exclude what's called junk stocks from your portfolio, all the problems that I've just described with the small company effect melt away and ordinary people can take advantage. So what you get is you get that big premium over the market, which I described. You get it adjusted for risk even. You get it across industries in different countries. It's not explained by liquidity factors. It works just as well in a growth strategy as in a value strategy. And it's a premium that grows the smaller the company is. It's bigger the smaller the company is. So it's to do with something called, as I just said, junk, right? Junk is just another, is a word that they use as a proxy for quality. The big insight of their paper is that if you buy quality stocks and if you omit junk, junk stocks, you get a much better return from investing in small caps. Okay, that's an important point, so I'm just gonna repeat it in a different way. This paper shows that small companies return more than big companies, provided that you omit junk stocks. So just to give you a bit of intuition, I've been talking in like in academic finance and abstract terms. The intuition behind this is that like, if you've been around AIM, you, you might recognize this idea. Uh, companies with like a nameplate in central London and a really nice website, uh, but which aren't really generating much profit and which maybe continually issue a lot of fresh uh, equity. A lot of fast going, a lot of small caps are basically a scam or they're on the verge of death and, and they're on their way to zero. And they mess up all the data. They mess up the returns for investing in small companies. They're what gets people in trouble and they're the reason why it's, it's hard to grab a hold of that. If you omit them, things get a lot easier. So, how do you do it? Simple set, simple process. Uh, Cliff Asnes and his team, they, com they came up with just a, a broad test for quality. It's kind of uncontroversial. They're looking at four different uh, characteristics of companies that you know, an investor would be willing to pay a bit more for all things being equal. So, you know, all things being equal, an investor would be willing to pay more for profitability, obviously. So they're looking for, uh, they're looking for uh, companies with higher gross profits, margins, earnings, cash flows, return on equity, things like that. Investors would be willing to pay more for growth because obviously growth implies that it'll be more valuable in a few years' time. So just to test that, they looked at how profit changes over time. The third thing that people would be willing to invest or would be willing to pay more for is safety. So any company with uh, low volatility in the market or maybe looking at their fundamentals, uh, companies with, with low debt, uh, 
better credit rate, credit scores, that sort of thing. And finally, it's uh, companies with a better payout ratio. And that just means uh, companies which are running the interest of their shareholders, which pay out more of their profits to their investors, and which don't tend to issue fresh equity. So that's, that's the, the test. Scan for companies which, ha which are growing, profitable, safe, running the interest of their shareholders. That's how you find these junk stocks. And then once you do, you find much better returns and much improved returns for investing in small companies. Okay, here's the outcome. This is what the, the benefit actually looks like. So what we're looking at here, these deciles look going from left to right. The, the, the first uh, set of bars is the smallest set, uh, set of basket of stocks up to the biggest on the right. So this is like dividing the entire market in, in size deciles. The green bar is the one that we're interested in because the green bar is the one that shows this like junk factor. When, once you have control for junk, this, is, this shows you, that's what that signifies. And specifically, the, the, the y-axis is showing the monthly return. So what this overall thing is telling you that if, if you focus on the smallest companies, the microcaps, the one of them at the, at the far left side of the graph, it's showing, that, showing you that once you control for junk, you get returns of 0 0.7, 0 0.69, 0 0.7 per month over, over the market. The other two lines show just by, by way of comparison, which is just uh, the risk-free rate, which is in blue, and also controlling for other factors, that's momentum and also size. So what this is showing you is that once you control for junk, you get extra returns over both the market and a simple portfolio, which is controlled for other factors like momentum and size. And here's a bit more intuition behind it. That, okay, that what this is showing you is uh, if you look at, look at the very smallest stocks in the market, if you look at like in AIM, look in microcaps, look in the smallest companies, that's showing you the quality distribution. And it's showing you that around 45, 35% of them are of the lowest quality on their score. And up at the very top, the, the palest color is the highest quality score, but it's showing you that among the smallest stocks, only about 10% would pass as having being of high quality. And basically, that's what I'm. That's what I'm here to talk to you about today. That's what my newsletter is about. That's the strategy. Invest in small companies to get the benefit of the small company effect, but do it in such a way that you only choose high quality stocks in order to get the green bar on the left. <laughs> basically, um, just a bit more intuition. intuition. Uh, here's a different way of looking at it. Uh, this is the size distribution among low quality stocks. So this is, it doesn't, this is amongst the very worst stocks in the market, or not worst, but sorry, lowest quality stocks in the market. Uh, this shows you know, what size they all are. And it shows that basically among the, the lowest quality stocks in the market, more than half of them, almost 70% of them are tiny. Um, and it shows that basically it, that the smallest end of the market is, is rife with companies which are of low quality. One more, more minute. Okay, so that's the background. That's my strategy. That's how it works. That's what I do. Um, my newsletter is built to capitalize on this. I basically shamelessly cogged Cliff Masters' idea. Uh, I use that as a basis. I've running. So I've got some professional grade screening software. I use that to replicate his results in real time. And that gives me a sort of a, a short list of companies from which I can proceed and, and pick what I, I, my philosophy is growth companies. Um, so that's, that's my newsletter, that's what I do. Uh, if you wanna learn a bit more about it, you can speak to me afterwards, I'll be down at the back of the hall here. Um, we're on the conference floor all day. And uh, that's it for me, thank you for your time. Much appreciated.